Got another lens to look at today. It's the TT Artisan 50mm f1.2. Not a scent product. I picked this up myself. Looked very interesting. The user guide with this doesn't really have any useful information. It's all in Chinese. But they do give you an MTF chart if you're into that kind of thing. Quick specifications on the screen for you so you can have a look at that. Four mounts at the minute for this and you can adjust the crop factor depending on the camera that you have. Front lens cap is metal and that just screws into the filter thread. Near the base you've got the focus ring and that does have the distance scale on it. It's quite nicely dampened on that. You've got quite a bit of resistance so you're not going to turn that by accident. It's very smooth. At the front of the lens you've got the aperture control and that is click mechanism on that. I'm pleased to see that. And that goes in half stop steps. Minimum aperture on this is down to f16. So good feel on both of these rings. Have to say, do like the tactile feedback. It does take a little bit getting used to because you only have those two uh, protrusions which have grooves in to control the aperture. And on the bottom there, we've got the lens mount. Nothing much to see there apart from the fact the red dot. I just prefer if they put that on the side. It just makes it a bit easier to mount to the camera. Very solid build on this. Everything is metal. There's no plastic. You will notice a bit of weight to this lens when you pick it up. You're not going to mistake it for a Leica by any means, but certainly in a world of plastic lenses, it is quite nicely made. I'll just show you the aperture blades now. When you close that down, you've got quite an unusual pattern with this because they've gone for 10 blades. It's just the design that they've gone with. We'll see what happens with that later on when we do a few more test shots. I did have a quick look online, different prices, so you should be able to pick this up for under 100 pick the currency of your choice and that's pretty good value for an f1.2 50mm lens though I would always say go with a 35mm for general use this could be quite a useful lens to have if you need a little bit of extra reach and of course shallow depth of field as well as the low light capabilities of the fast lens if you're wondering about the markings on the lens they are laser etched into the case material they are not painted on what I'm going to do now is a few tests and we'll start off just by looking at the resolution of the lens. Very simple shot and at f1.2 it's actually pretty good, wide open, pretty decent sharpness. And you'll notice when you start to stop the lens down, the most obvious difference is that the contrast starts to pick up. And there is an improvement in details but it's still very usable, wide open, at least in the middle of the image. And I've shot a lot of images with this lens in the last week or so. Move over to the corner crops now and at 1.2 there is some softness there although it's not horrible by any means and that gradually picks up and sharpens up the resolution around about f4 5.6 it gets quite good there's not too much difference between f5.6 and f8. Let's look at the outer focus areas now at f1.2 very soft with the background very diffused and quite pleasing to be honest very round but once you start to stop it down the shape of the aperture blades does show up and it's going to be down to taste whether or not you like it. Personally, I don't care that much for it myself, but um, you're only really going to get that round effect wide open on this lens. It's not unusual to see the aperture blade shape turn up on lenses when you stop them down, but they're generally not as obvious. Moving on to the lens flare, and it can be a problem with this lens. You're going to have to either get yourself a hood or probably best thing to do is just shield it with your hand and that should eliminate most of the problems. There is some barrel distortion on this. On the upside, the vignetting is quite mild, even at f1.2. Obvious use for this lens would be portraits due to the shallow depth of field. And I'm pretty happy with the performance wide open. Obviously gonna be a little bit tricky to nail focus at times, but you will see some chromatic aberration and that can be an issue. You get that green in the background and also you get a sort of purple or magenta in the foreground. So I thought I'd do a little bit more investigation in this, see what's going on with the chromatic aberration. This is longitudinal chromatic aberration, uh, which shows up in foreground and background. That's why the colors are different. What I found is around about F4, most of it is gone. It's not entirely cleaned up, but a good bit of it has definitely decreased. I'm trying to show you some of the worst case scenarios with this lens. These guys walking across the bridge, I'm wide open f1.2 and a decent reproduction in the middle as you'd expect. You can see there quite a lot of fringing going on in the background. 
particularly with the green. That's probably the worst out of both of them. This is the worst that I've seen it on this lens. That's why I picked this shot. I did take a shot at f8, stopping the lens down to what I consider would be about as far as you'd go on APS-C. Most of that fringing is gone, but you can see on the edge there's a little bit of the purple fringing there. Not a particularly big problem with that, would be easy enough to remove, but good details all around, as I would expect for a 50mm lens that was stopped down. 50cm is a bit hazy at f1.2. Once you stop down to f4, that does pick up quite a bit in terms of the detail and contrast. You might want to go a little bit further down to get even better, but it's usable at f4 for close up shots. Give you a few thoughts on the lens whilst I'm showing you a few sample images. I did enjoy using this lens. It is still a useful focal length even on a crop sensor camera. But do be aware if you're shooting at f1.2, even on the day like it was today, which was mostly cloudy, I was hitting 4,000th of a second shutter speed, which was the maximum on this camera. So on bright sunny days, you are definitely going to need to get an ND filter if you want to use this wide open. Sometimes I even have problems with f2.8 lenses on cameras that go up to 8,000th of a second. That's just the way it is with faster apertures in bright light. Optically, I think the lens is actually quite good, particularly when you take into account the price point. There's a lot of 50mm lenses out there that you can adapt, and some of them are quite affordable. Not so much at the f1.2 aperture, though. Generally going to be paying quite a bit more for those lenses than some of the other 50mm. Most obvious downside is going to be that fringing. That is something you're going to have to deal with if you are shooting frequently at the faster apertures. Don't forget to stick around. I've got more videos coming up very soon and thanks for watching.